Hi everyone, welcome to another product review. Today I'm going to review the Karen Dutch water brushes. The refilling mechanisms of these water brushes is a bit different compared to other water brushes, so I'm going to show that to you later on. But first, let's take a closer look at these three water brushes that I have. You can get the water brushes separately or as a set. I bought these three as a set and this is the packaging. And inside this set, there are three different brush tips. There's the large, the medium and the fiber tip. Let's take a look at the tip. So for this red water brush, this actually has a fiber tip. This is like a sponge tip. It's quite firm. There is almost no flex at all. This is like those marker felt tips, those larger ones like the Copic marker tips. And this feels exactly like that, but it has less flex. This purplish water brush. This is the medium tip. It uses synthetic bristles. So when it's wet, it's supposed to be able to keep a point. And the last one, the black water brush, this is the large tip. So you can see that it's able to keep a sharp point. This uses synthetic bristles as well. Just like many other water brushes, the whole brush is made of plastic. This part here, this part here is actually made of rubber. And there's this little button here and also on the other side where you can press to push the water out from the water reservoir behind to the tip. So it's only a small section here where you can press. As for the water reservoir behind, this actually uses a piston type refilling mechanism. I have here with me a Holbein water brush and let me open this up. So the refilling mechanism of this is different from the Karen Dutch because here this hole is larger. I can put this body under the running tap and it can fill this uh, rather easily. To fill this water brush with water, you cannot just submerge the tip in water and pull the piston. It doesn't work that way. See here, no water is coming up. You actually have to unscrew this and submerge this part in the water and then pull the piston up. So I see that some water has gotten into the body. And let me turn this upside down to push some of the air out and put it back in again to pull more water up. And let me do that again. So I have to do it three times to completely fill this body. And the amount of water that this can hold, it's, I'm not too sure how much water this can hold, but the length of the water inside this body is like this. So it holds a decent amount of water. You also cannot repeatedly push the piston up and down like this. It doesn't fill the body completely. That's because the piston doesn't go all the way down here. So when I pull this up, when I turn this around, I have this gap here, this uh, gap of air. So I need to do this again and pull it, turn it upside down and pull it. This is now completely filled with water. There is water here and there is water inside the piston as well. If you were to uh, screw the brush tip back on, this is going to be very long because this piston is extended. So the last step is actually to push the piston back in. It actually will push some of the water out and then screw this part back on and this is uh, the amount of water that you can have if you're actually painting outdoors you may not uh, need to push the piston back in if you need more water you can extend all the, the piston all the way out like this 
one thing to take note of is when there is a cap behind you can actually put this cap behind and when you are keeping the water brush you just pull the cap behind notice how the piston actually moves so this movement is going to basically pull some of the colors into the reservoir so it's going to make the water inside the reservoir a bit dirty so that's something to take note of of course if your piston is extended all the way to the back and you have your cap back here well this is really very long it's like a like those very long chinese bamboo brush but when you pull this out the piston is already uh, extended so it doesn't suck the color from the bristle back into the water reservoir behind personally for me i will not put this cap here at the back even though i can do so because when i pull this the piston moves the paint gets pulled inside this gets dirty i have to change the water and that is um, very inconvenient so i will put this in my pocket rather than put this at the back of this water brush when the water brush is new they actually have some sort of coating on the bristles on the hair to group all the hairs together now let me show you what i mean so there is actually uh, some sticky stuff here now you have to wash that off first before you start using it because um, or else the sticky stuff will go onto the paper so i'm going to wash this off first if you have problems washing the sticky coating off you can use some warm water so i have just washed off the coating and now this is how the bristles how it actually should perform all right let me show you the strokes that the water brushes can create i'm going to start with the medium tip let me just add some water to this color to reactivate it so i have to press this button here on the side i actually like um, this button now compared to other watercolor brushes like this the whole body can be pressed but here you can only press this button so it's less likely for you to accidentally um, squeeze out more water so this is actually quite nice so this blue colored water brush is the medium tip let's draw some thin and thick strokes this is the widest it can get let's try and create a flat wash so for this particular flat wash i am not pressing i'm not releasing any water if i release water then it's going to be diluted it's going to be a gradated wash let's try and create a gradated wash so as i paint this i'm going to press the button on the side to get more water out oops all right there is some um, issue with the water coming out that i have to talk about later on in fact let me zoom in to have the water come out gradually you have to press the button softly if you press it too hard can you see that water droplet forming behind the brush hair and that is going to drip onto the paper so that was what happened just now watch as i try and repeat that so see the water droplet there so it's going to drop there i mean if you plan it correctly you can drop at the correct place but if you are unaware of that it may drop somewhere else and it may actually affect your painting so that's something to take note of but usually when the brush tip is dry when you're painting and this is dry when you press 
the water should uh, be used to wet the brush tip rather than come out from here. Just don't press too hard. That is not a Karen Dutch specific problem. For example, this is a Holbein water brush and when I press it, you can see that water droplet coming out from there as well. When mixing, I would usually just press to add some water and just uh, wet the paint like this. So let's see what kind of strokes uh, this big brush can create. As I lift up the brush, it can go back to a tip. So this is great because sometimes you want to draw thin lines and you want the thin lines to go become thick. And then next you want to draw thin lines again. This brush allows you to do so. So this is great. And let's see what I can paint. See if I can paint a large wash area. So with a large brush like this, I can paint a larger area uh, rather easily and quickly. And the last water brush is the fiber tip brush or the sponge tip brush. I'm actually not too sure the actual application for this. Let me just soak this sponge tip and draw. So you can sort of use this like a marker. And I guess the main characteristic is you can use this to draw very uniform line. But the lines will be uniform. You don't have the thin and thick. Let me just press down. You can see if, uh, when I press the water, the water actually run ran to the tip, and I have excess water here. So I guess this is um, its application for drawing uniform lines. Unlike normal brushes, when you need to change the color, when you need to mix a color. Um, sometimes you have to clean the tip office. If you just use this tip and go and uh, add some water and paint, for example, just mix it with the red like this, it's going to make this color a bit dirty. So now it's a bit dirty. And there is still some blue in it. So sometimes if I'm lazy, there is blue on the tip. I'm just going to just use it straight onto the red like this but if I am more careful if I need to mix the colors more uh, cleanly I will actually just get the blue out like this first and then clean the brush just uh, press the button to get the water out so that you can clean the brush and then I'm going to pick up the paint here and mix it here so that I do not dirty this color. So having tissue around when you're using a water brush, this is actually very essential. For normal brushes, you can have a cup of water to wash the normal brush, but for water, brush, water brushes like this, it is best to have some tissue so that you can clean off the brush before you mix another color because if the brush tip is dirty and you mix a color that is very bright. For example, if you want to add yellow, if you put blue or red onto yellow, the color, the yellow is going to be very dirty. It's going to be uh, very difficult to clean off later on. All right, let me just very quickly color this sketch to show you how I usually use the water brush. So I will just dab to add some water onto the palette to wet the paint and I mix it with this red to get the skin tone and if it's too dark here again I will press to add some water down so that it's uh, it's going to make it a bit lighter let me add a bit more red here oops too much red let me add more water and if it really goes wrong that's where this tissue will come in handy so let me just add some colors here okay and for the hair 
Um, since blue is very dark, I do not need to clean my brush tape. I can just again add some water into this area here, onto this mixing well, and get that blue. I'm going to mix it with a bit of the red, but more with blue, so I can get, so I can get the hair. This part here is not dry yet, so if I paint over, the color is going to blend into the into the skin tone, and I'm not sure if I want that. Now this is the part that I like about this brush, and actually uh, other brushes as well. For this particular brush, this water brush, you can get very thin lines, so you can get strokes like this. So let me just add a bit more water to this. And for her lips, this is where I need to clean the brush because I want the lips to be red. So in this case, I need to squeeze out some of the water so that the water can help me clean the brush. And when the brush is sufficiently clean, I will add some water to this palette again to get some of the red and paint here. The strokes that this water brush can create is actually no different compared to other brands, it's just that the refilling mechanism is different. And because of the refilling mechanism, whether or not this water brush is suitable for you will depend on where you are going to use this water brush. So for example, if you are painting outdoors and you run out of water, you have to refill it somewhere and you need to have a cup of water so they can basically just put this into the water and pull the piston up to get the water in. If you are uh, somewhere where you have access to a water tap, you can actually put this under the running tap. Again, just try and pull the water in with the tap running. It's uh, doable. But when you're outdoors refilling, personally, I prefer this because I can sort of uh, still pour water into my water brush using my water bottle. I do not need to bring a separate cup outdoors with me. Nowadays I seldom use water brush because I find that cleaning the water brush like this is not as fast compared to using a normal brush and having a water tray where you can clean the brush very quickly and very thoroughly. Uh, when cleaning a water brush like this usually it's not going to get the brush 100% clean. And also I prefer to use a normal brush because they are a bit more predictable. Alright, um, so that's all for my review today. I hope it is helpful in some way. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.